All right, guys, it's been a long time since I felt so drawn and motivated to just like record a video out of the blue. But literally like 45 minutes ago in the shower, I just got hit with the randomest inspiration to tier list my life. So I finished up my shower. I got out and I wrote down a bunch of random things on a list. Like literally everything's on this list, guys, like romantic life, vices, cigarettes, fitness, meditation, uh, attractiveness, financial status, a bunch of just random things that just poured out of me. And I threw them down on a piece of paper and I tier listed them honestly and unobjectively how I feel about each of these situations in my life. And why I think this idea is genius is because it gave me a lot of clarity about how I'm like looking at my life and how things are actually going for me. And I think if you're watching this video, there's two things to take from it. One, either you just want to watch some fun content and watch me roast myself in some areas of life, um, or you might get some ideas and some inspiration from this and be able to apply it to your life and maybe think of your life in terms of tier lists of things that are relevant to you and actually organically put them on this tier list. S tier being what you're really good at, what's really good and going right for you. And then F tier, what is absolutely fucking absurd and has no reason to really just be in your life anymore. So without further ado, guys, DBD Builds, AKA Lord Commander Builds, AKA Sammy Stark. I don't know what YouTube channel you're watching me on, because I'll probably post this to both of them. But I've got multiple channels and I play Helldivers 2. I play Dead by Daylight. I also talk about sobriety, mental health, motivational things, spiritual things, inspirational things. I'm kind of just a, a jack of all trades, guys. I'm a generalist. I just I do a lot of things and I'm kind of just cool being a guy who does a lot of random things. I'm even a nurse. I'm a trauma nurse by day. So anyways, Sammy Stark builds whatever tier list let's start off so first thing on the tier list guys is we have meditation now meditation is a great habit it helps you calm your mind it controls the flight of ideas the thoughts helps you take a step back and look at your emotions and the way you're feeling in any given moment and actually decide if that's the right thing for you like Am I making the right decisions? Am I on the right path? And as far as my meditation habit, guys, I meditate every single day besides the days I go to work at the hospital. So basically, I meditate like four or five times a week, always after my workouts in the morning because my routine is actually pretty down. I have intermittent fast 16 hours every day. I eat from like one to nine. Typically, that'll work out perfectly because I wake up in the morning. First thing I do is I go to the gym and then afterwards I shower up. I meditate. I even meditated before recording this video. And the reason why I do it is because I've wrestled a lot with my emotional health and my thoughts just running rampant and me dwelling on thoughts that have no business being in my head and even addictions like my coping mechanisms like drinking alcohol. I used to drink a shit ton of alcohol years ago. And uh, really, it came from this place of not being able to cope with life or manage my emotions regularly. So I bought into this meditation practice and I've been meditating four or five times a week for probably like three, four years now. And I've definitely changed And I meditate when I don't feel like I need to meditate. I meditate when I feel like I need to meditate. I meditate every day because it's essential for me to just always feel grounded and have peace of mind. And if I don't get anything else done in a day besides meditating and working out, that's still a good day for me. So I'm giving myself meditation hella S tier because your boy's actually killing it in the realms of meditation and breath work because I do it all the time, guys. And I actually enjoy doing it. Sometimes all I want to do is just breathe, let it out and think about nothing. Enough said. Moving on. Spirituality and peace of mind. Now, I was tempted to give myself lower S tier on this, but I actually am going to go ahead and put in upper A tier. And the reason why is because while I am deeply spiritual now, especially after my travels throughout Thailand and Southeast Asia, and I do have a really good peace of mind most of the time, I still wrestle with that feeling of like, what if, or is there more out there for me? Am I really meant to be? I don't wrestle with it as much as I used to. But it's still something that hits me from time to time. And sometimes external experiences will knock your boy off balance. It's not often that happens. I've done a lot of the work. I'm really good at not letting external influences impact how I internally feel these days. But sometimes life happens and sometimes I have that reality check to where I'm just like, OK, maybe I am not quite there yet. So maybe 
Honestly, spirituality could be lower S, but I'm going to put it in upper A and be a little bit more humble here because I am deeply spiritual. I do always believe I'm right where I'm meant to be. This is my destiny. I'm on the right path. Um, but there are times where I do still have my doubts. It's not often, very little, but because it still kind of comes from time to time, we'll do upper A tier. My diet. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you guys. For someone who works out every day, my diet is not the best. I gave myself B tier. So upper B tier, maybe I'm being harsh on myself because I eat a mix of really healthy shit. Like I'll have like salads and like protein shakes and like sweet potato smoothies. And when I do my own meal prep, it's always healthy foods like quinoa, brown rice with bell peppers, chicken, avocado, really good, clean nutrition, healthy food. But I also love sugar. I eat a fuck ton of cookies and these dark chocolate peanut butter cups. And I have a love of pizza mr jim's thin crust with the beef and the pepperoni on it it's so fucking good i eat, eat like one of those pizzas probably like every week so if i'm really thinking about it my diet i guess you could say it's a balanced diet because i'm eating i eat a lot of really clean good healthy foods omega-3 fats the the good things but i also enjoy my pizza Sometimes it's like Buzzy's tacos, sometimes it's chips and KSO, sometimes it's dark chocolate peanut butter cups, which are fucking delightful. <sighs> or like cookies and cupcakes and brownies. I don't know what it is, but I've been having a sweet tooth probably for like the last year or two. So I definitely ingest more sugar than you would think uh, a man who looks health and fitness would. But hey, you got you got to live a little. So I'm giving myself an upper B tier on the diet. You know, it ain't it ain't the best thing. But it's also not the worst thing. Um, but I do feel like it could be better. That's why it's not going in A tier. Smoking. All right. Confession times, guys. Your boy has actually developed a liking for cigarettes. While I was traveling through Southeast Asia, I met a lot of European people. And I didn't think much about it at the time. You know, I'm 33 years old. I don't have this background as a smoker. Uh, alcohol was a substance I wrestled with, so I dabbled in cigarettes. I was smoking a Marlboro from time to time. Then before I realized it, I was smoking quite a few Marlboros in Thailand. Stopped smoking when I got back to the States. Quit for a month, went to a bachelor party, bought a pack of cigarettes, lit up for a weekend, quit again. Um, and I don't even know, want to say like quitting because it's not like I am a smoker. I don't smoke every day, but I've noticed myself doing this like behavior where I'll like pick up some cigarettes and smoke for like a couple days and then I'll just put it down because I don't want to get addicted. I'm a nurse. I know how harmful smoking is. I know how bad it is for you. I am aware of the bullshit. The And I'm aware of why I'm smoking because it, it feels good. Nicotine just tickles my brain in a way I kind of actually enjoy. But every time I smoke, I'm like, why am I doing with this? Like, I don't need another crippling vice. I don't need another bad habit. I don't need another addiction. I don't want to get addicted, but I'm still doing it. I'm conscious of it. I'm aware of it. But let's be real. I got to give myself F tier for smoking because I, I shouldn't be smoking. I'm doing it. I'm enjoying my time doing it. But it's not something I can do forever for sure. And it's not something I want to get addicted to. So also, it's really bad for your health. It's basically cancer sticks. And I know this, but... <laughs> Marlboros, they why are they so good? <laughs> oh, I hate telling you guys this, but yeah, tobacco's kind of nice. Moving on. Gym and fitness. All right, so I also work out every day. I meditate every day and I work out every day. And I don't have to think twice about working out. Like I get up first thing in the morning and before I do anything else, assuming I'm not working one of my shifts at the hospital, like I said, I go to the gym. There's no excuse to not ever go to the gym. To earn my day, I have to work out first. And it doesn't matter if it's just like some light cardio or actually a full-blown three-hour back buys and cardio and abs or whatever I'm doing. I have to start my day with some kind of movement. I have to move my body. Literally, if you don't move your body, you will lose your body. I firmly believe this, and I want to stay fit and young and healthy for as long as possible. It's something I deeply value, and that's why every day starts with the gym. Like I said, meditation, workout, meditate. If I don't do anything else that day, the day is still a win because those habits will keep me mentally fit and healthy and calibrated. And then the gym will also, also helps keep you mentally fit and calibrated because of the dopamine uh, keeps you also in shape. It lets me eat whatever I want. That's why I enjoy my sugar. And it's good to move my body because as long as I'm moving my body, I won't lose my body, at least that quickly. Eventually, we all have to die, but... 
working out is a big priority for me and I do do it every day. So I'm giving it a hard S tier because I don't have to think twice. I go to the gym, I wake up, I go lift, train, cardio, whatever. It doesn't really matter. You can do fitness in whatever kind of way you want to do fitness. But the point is you get it in at least once a day because our bodies were made to be moving. They're not made to be sitting at a computer all day or laying in bed all day or just sitting on a couch all day. This, this body, this beautiful body, got to move it, got to use it. S tier. All right, here's a fun one. Dead by daylight survivor skills. I'll be real, guys. I think I'm pretty good at dead by daylight, but I don't think I'm the best. I'm not one of these goats like Ot Starva or uh, JRM who've been playing for like eight years and know all of the in and outs of all of the perks. So I'm going to give myself a mid A tier on this one. So I'm not S tier. Even though all I play is Survivor, the reason why I'm not S tier is because all I play is Survivor. If I played more killer and learned actually the other role better and I knew all of the killer add-ons and killer perks, I'd probably be a better Survivor. But because I don't really like playing killer that much, it's kind of holding back my Survivor skills just a little bit. So I'm going to give myself A tier. I know I have a YouTube channel. I make that by daylight content. But let's be real, I, I'm not a god at the game. I'm just a guy who enjoys playing the game. And there's plenty of videos out there of me just losing, getting my ass served. So I'm going to give myself an A tier on that. Financial situation. All right. I'm not broke by any means. But I also don't make a shit ton of money. I'm part-time right now. I do my two shifts a week. I make enough to just sustain my lifestyle. And then I just kind of chill. Maybe I save a little bit. I should be working more and saving it more. Um. I'm not filthy rich. YouTube hasn't taken off yet. I'm not making like crazy money from YouTube. I'm a nurse, so I make decent money, especially if I pick up my shifts. I don't really have any debt. There's a little bit of student loans I need to clear up, but besides that, your boy doesn't have any debt. There's no car payments. There's no crazy bills I have to pay. I'm giving myself a B tier. We'll do like upper B, maybe like lower A. So my whole thing is money to me at this phase of my life isn't really that important. Sure, it's good. You need money to thrive. You need money to get your basic needs met, your basic essentials, your basic happiness. So, you know, no roof, no food, you're not going to be happy. But then after that, money for me doesn't really buy me any more happy. Like if I had a million dollars right now, I'd probably be doing the exact same thing that I'm doing now. Making YouTube videos, working out, playing some DVD, hell divers, chilling. I don't know, trying to date maybe. <laughs> uh, but I really wouldn't impact my quality of life. And that's why I'm giving it like a B tier because one, I don't find money that important right now. I mean, it is important. I think most people watching this video will be just like pulling their hair out. Like, what the fuck? This guy doesn't care about money. But it's true. I don't really care about money. I have enough to sustain myself. Now, why I'm giving myself B tiers because I could definitely be making more money. I could be saving more money. I could be putting away for emergencies. I could have a surplus of income one day so I could actually, you know, raise a family and take care of my wife and kids. And this is like end game goals, you know. The YouTube stuff takes off and I get smart with my finances. When I get to that point in my life, I would love to be able to just provide that for my family. Right now, I provide for myself just fine because it's, it's literally just me. But I'm not at the place right now where I could provide for. I mean, I could. It would just involve me working a lot more than I'd like to work. Uh, and your boy doesn't really like working too much. I like my two days and five days working two days a week and five days a week off. It just it feels so fucking good. But as far as money goes, it's it's going to be in the B tier for me because I could be making more and I could be doing the investments and like stocks and more IRAs or just hustling at the hospital. But I just really not a hustler. So we're going to we're going to put a lower B tier, you know, maybe if things pick up. We'll give myself a promotion on that. But right now, B tier dead by daylight killer skills. Let's be real, guys. I really don't play killer that often. I've maybe played under 30 games, and I would say like that would even be pushing it. Maybe like 40. I don't know. I haven't played a lot of killer. My killer's trash. F tier. F tier. I talked about this in the survivor stuff. Literally, if I played more killer, my survivor would probably be better, but I just don't really care about playing killer that much, so we're giving myself a solid F. There's a lot for me to learn, a lot for me to explore. I may be pretty good with like Wraith and Wesker. Um, but other than that, I don't, or the night, I'm pretty good with the night too, but I haven't really touched any of the other killers moving on. Sobriety. You don't know. I quit drinking alcohol like three and a half years ago. It was a struggle at first. That used to be a coping mechanism for me. It was a, a time of a lot of pain and a lot of emotion and a lot of tears and a lot of just breakdowns. 
uh, getting my life back together without alcohol being a part of the picture anymore. Like no drinking with friends, no drinking to cope, no drinking when I'm happy, no drinking when I'm sad. Hard ass thing to overcome. Probably the first year to two after sobriety, that was all I thought about. It was just like staying sober and like focused on the path and building up this new version of me. But now that I'm three and a half years since I've had a drink, it doesn't cross my mind at all. It's something I did and I accomplished and I feel really damn good about it. It's got to go fucking S tier, guys. Your boy hasn't had a drink in three and a half years. I don't think about alcohol. I don't want to drink alcohol. It just it doesn't have that place in my brain. Cigarettes, different story, but alcohol no desire to even drink anymore. It's kind of just this substance that's outlived its purpose. It's mute to me. Work-life balance. I just touched on this a little bit, talking about my relationship with like money and how I value my freedom. My work-life balance right now is sick, guys. I only have to work two shifts at the hospital a week, and then I have five days off. So if I work like a Sunday, Monday, and then I sign up the next week for the following Friday, Saturday, which is still that week, I have 10 days off from work, so I can literally take vacation whenever without having to actually take vacation from work. It's like the sweetest fucking setup ever. Like having 10 days off from work, like right now as I'm making this video, I'm on like my fifth day off out of like nine in a row. Life is so sweet to just be able to enjoy your days and just live life and be comfortable. We got to give myself a hard S tier for work-life balance because right now, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty damn good. I have a lot of me time, a lot of free time. Uh, like I said, the issue is that I'm not making as much money, but money, who, who needs money? <laughs> uh, I know some of you guys are rolling every time I say that because you're probably like, what? He doesn't care about money. Like, I'm pretty happy. Why do I need more money? Like, it's not going to make me more happy. It's just going to help me deal with life issues. It's basically just a tool to me. Moving on. Oh, oh, we're going to get vulnerable here. Romance. DBD builds love life. Sammy Stark's love life. I'm giving myself a lower B tier for romance and my romantic life right now because of a couple things. One, well, I'm 33. I'm single. Nothing wrong with being single. If you're out there and you're single, love your singledom. Enjoy the kingdom that you're currently in. But why I'm giving myself a B is because one, relationships are hard. Like every relationship I've had up to this point, and there has been relationships. I'm not like this weird guy who's never dated anybody. Uh, they've all crashed and burned for their own reasons. and you know, that's fine. I've made peace with all of my past relationships, but it's really hard to find that genuine connection with someone and to actually find someone compatible with yourself that you want to actually like build a life with that stable connection. And I haven't found that yet. So that's why I'm giving myself a B tier. Not saying that I won't find it someday. Like I'm open to it, but I'm really okay being alone and being by myself right now. But also, I will give it a B tier because I think romantic uh, life and situations like being single is probably one of the hardest things I've wrestled with. I've always felt like I needed to be with someone, like I was a relationship kind of guy. And that has been a struggle. And for me, when relationships don't work out or if I'm dating someone and it doesn't work out or when a relationship crashes and burns, despite all the meditation, despite all the sobriety, despite all the grounding and masculinity and spiritual cultivation, that shit will still get to me. It doesn't get to me like it used to. It's not like I'm going to go burn it down with a 12 pack of booze and a bottle of tequila and just go full little peep sad boy. I've done that before. Not anymore. <laughs> uh, but it's still one of those things that really gets under my skin and like checks my ego and makes me just question like, am I doing things right? Am I that man I want to be? Why haven't I attracted this yet? I feel like I'm doing things good. And you know, it's definitely something like I thought I always wanted. Now these days, I don't really think I want it as much as I used to. It's kind of like this thing, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I'm giving myself a B tier because it had been something that I did want for a long time that I didn't actually succeed at. So your, your boy, man, not, not saying that I'm not like getting dates or like talking with chicks every now and then. Like it's, I don't do it all the time. When I just do it kind of like when it comes up. It's not like I go looking for it. Like not when I'm in, in my 20s and I'm like just trying to talk to all the girls. Now nah, I'm chill, dude. I'm 33. I'm enjoying life. If there's a chick who wants to hang out, I'm down. If it fizzles out, that's fine. But it's it's definitely going to hurt a little bit. So B tier. <laughs> B tier. Um, but I have to actually go into the ability to be alone and enjoy your single them in your life by itself. Because I think they go hand in hand. 
So romance life, we're giving ourselves a B tier, but you can't talk about like romance in the kingdom of singledom without the ability to just be alone. And that was something I wrestled with for a long time because a lot of times in my head, I would think, why don't I feel fulfilled right now? Why doesn't life feel complete? And I'm like, oh, maybe I'm not complete because I don't have that person, that Disney paradigm. You know, they sell us on this story of finding your forever partner and then your whole. And I think that was so molded in my brain that every time I was single, I just felt like incomplete that I started doing this exercise with myself, like literally this last year, um, especially when I was traveling throughout Southeast Asia of catching myself when I would think about my relationship status and, you know, being single and how it affected me and how it made me feel like I wasn't complete. And then I would check myself and ask myself the opposite question, like, okay, hold on. I, life is too short for me to feel bad in the state I'm in. If I'm in the kingdom of singledom, I should be loving my life. If I'm in the kingdom of a relationship, I should be loving my life. If I'm fat, I should be loving my life. If I'm skinny, I should be loving my life. If I'm rich, I should be loving my life. If I'm poor, I should be loving my life. Kind of back to this idea that the external stuff shouldn't impact you internally ever. So I had I started asking myself this question. If I was alone forever and it was just my company I was in for the rest of my life, would I be okay? And the first answer for the longest time was, no, that sounds like a nightmare. That sounds fucking horrible. That's the last thing I ever want to do. Like, no, I'm a lover. I want to be married. I want the wife and the kids and the family and the picket fence and pool. Uh, <laughs> But I realized that because my response was so opposite that the as paradoxical as it sounds, the thing that I actually really needed to do was actually get good and get to a place to where I enjoy my company thoroughly. That doesn't matter if, I, if I'm alone or single or with someone. So I'm giving myself a tier, I think upper a tier with that, because my ability to be alone these days is really good. Honestly, it's a little bit too good. I enjoy my solitude and my time to myself a little too much like sometimes I have to remind myself to get out and be social because I go through these waves of like where I'm really social and I'm connecting with a lot of people and talking with a lot of people like when I was traveling I was in a social wave when I got back to the states for the first two months I was really social connecting with all kinds of people but over these last couple of weeks I've noticed that social battery diminish and I'm back into my solitude bubble you know like I go to the gym work out meditate come home play some hell divers or dbd or read a book or just chill watch a movie and I'm okay just doing that for the rest of my life, basically. <laughs> and it's kind of bad because that doesn't really go hand in hand with like the goal of having a relationship. But there's nothing wrong with being okay in your own company. Like your company will be the only company you are in for your entire life. Um, so get good with it. And right now, I enjoy the experience of being Sammy. I enjoy who I am. I enjoy the man I am. I enjoy the the joys of life and also the pains all of it i'm here i'm here for it i accept my destiny and I, if i have to play this game alone forever then so be it i'm okay with it literally i, I can like you can sense it like it doesn't bother me anymore I'm, I'm happy i'm gonna be happy either way alone single doesn't matter i'm gonna be a man that i am proud of and i'm gonna be a man whose company i enjoy being and honestly i don't need anything else to be happy i'm right here i'm chilling Talking with this inanimate object right here. I've got this little Pikachu right here. Like, what up, dude? Sammy, you okay being alone forever? Like, fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, see, I'm able to just like make myself laugh without anything else, which is a talent in itself. So, ability to be alone, A to you, baby. Intermittent fasting. I could talk too much about this. I intermittent fast every day. I only eat from one to nine typically. Why I do this is because it helps me feel balanced when I give my digestive system a break. It's not to like lose weight or anything, but it's more like if you think of your body as a car and if you're always driving and you don't stop to get oil changes or gas, the car is going to break down. That's basically the theory behind intermittent fasting to me. Like if you're eating around the clock, always eating, you don't give your digestive system a break. So the rest of your body can do the maintenance to clean out old cells. There's actually a thing called autophagy. Like the longer you fast and go without food, uh, physical food, like carbs and calories, not water. Like I still drink water when I'm fasting. Uh, your body goes into this cleanup cycle. So a lot of the disease processes we have these days, like diabetes and high blood sugar, are because we're just eating too much, eating around the clock, and also eating the wrong food choices. But my theory is that, and actually I feel a lot cleaner and better now that I take a break from eating. Sometimes I'll go 16 hours, sometimes 18 hours. Every now and then I'll do like a two, three day fast. Um, I feel so much better in my own body, like emotionally, I feel just very stable, 
food doesn't always like I've noticed when I eat around the clock, I just feel like groggy minded and just kind of just never really centered and sometimes like emotional, irritable. When I take breaks from eating, I just feel at peace a lot of the time. And I've never really been that much of a breakfast kind of guy. So intermittent fasting, S tier, killing it. I don't have to think twice about it. I actually enjoy going long periods of time without food. And what you'll find is that when you go 16, 18, 20 hours without actually eating physical food, your brain starts to release ketones, which are a much cleaner energy source. So you actually become more creative. You start to think a lot clearer. If I'm really depressed and I fast for like two, three days, my depression will be gone instantly because my brain switches to ketones and then all of a sudden I'm just kind of happy again. Nurse. I've been a nurse for like 11 years, guys. ER trauma the whole time. I'm giving myself S tier. Am I over it in a lot of ways? Yeah, I am. But am I a good nurse at the end of the day? Yeah, I think I am. Really not much more to talk about that. <laughs> Moving on. Hell divers. All right, we're going to talk about my hell diver skills. Hell divers against the Terminids. We're giving your boy A tier. I live to live the Starship Trooper experience. I love fighting the bugs. I love blowing the bugs up. I love killing the bugs with flamethrowers and all kinds of AoE weapons. I think I'm like level 43 or 44 in hell divers right now. And basically, all I fought are the Terminids, which brings me into hell divers automatons. I've probably played like five games versus the automatons. I am dirt shit. I am trash. I am garbage. I always get sniped by something and killed by something, and I don't know what the fuck I'm doing against the automatons. So against the automatons, I am a F tier. I am not good at all at fighting the automatons. <laughs> but Terminids, different story, baby. Freedom, democracy. All right, a couple more here on my tier list. Oh, YouTube videos and my skills as a YouTuber. So I think... I'm pretty good at YouTubing and making videos, but I also see there's a lot of room for growth and development. Like I'm not one of these guys who's making all the shorts. A lot of my content could be better edited. A lot of my content could be more seamless. Like I'd made a Helldivers video recently that actually kind of took off surprisingly, but I rewatched it and I just, I didn't even like it at all. It felt boring to me. And I'm like, why did I even make that video? And of course it showed, it got a lot of dislikes on it. Uh, so I'm giving myself an A tier, somewhere in the middle of A tier. I think I've got a lot of good messages to say, especially on my Sammy Stark channel. Uh, and then my DVD Bills channel is just like fun game, just chilling, having a good time. And a lot of you guys actually really enjoy me, the person I am, which is crazy. I mean, I don't think I'm a bad dude, I think, but it's cool. I get a lot of comments these days that are just like, hey, man, you're my favorite YouTuber to watch. And I, whenever I get to see one of those, I get like chills. I'm like, me? Really? Me? This, me? This normal guy here? <laughs> Uh, but it's fucking sick. And if you're one of those guys, fucking love you. You're a fucking legend. Uh, but I do see myself as having a lot of like areas to grow in terms of YouTube and content creation. So I'll give myself an A tier. Um, uh, attractiveness. There's two more left, guys. Attractiveness. Oh, uh, <laughs> you see the smile? I think when I smile, I, I'm pretty good. Like I'm six foot four. Got got de decent muscles, um, you know, decent frame. I think A tier. Like, I don't want to be, I'm, I'm not S tier. I'm not like this Giga Chad. I'm not like 6% body fat, super shredded with the, the, the masculine jaw and the full head of hair. I'm actually bald. It's just fine. I like being bald. Um, the beard is nice on me. I like the beard. I like my nose ring, the, 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 the dangle earring, the tattoos. I'm giving myself A tier. Like, there's definitely, I don't think I'm like, I'm, de I'm not supermodel attractive and I'm not like Giga Chad like attractive, but I'm not like an ugly dude. I'm just like, you know, A tier. And the cool thing, guys, if you're any a young man watching this, is you could be F tier on the attractiveness scale. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, girls, the dynamic is different between guys and girls. Like, guys value attractiveness more than women for sure, but women. They value it a little bit. Some women might be really shallow and just like want like that perfect chisel guy. But in general, girls just like a guy who's confident in himself and he's chill and he's cool. And like it wouldn't matter if you're A tier, F tier or B tier. Attractiveness as a man is just like the more confident you are in yourself, the more attractive you will be. It's not like you just go to the gym and work out and get that six pack and then the world loves you because you're attractive. It's kind of just the opposite. You could have a belly and be a... A plus size dude, I and mean, just if you chill, like people can enjoy you. But me personally, 
I don't know. It's such a weird thing talking about attractiveness. I feel like I'm just like going deep into vanity right now, but <laughs> I think I'm just like A tier. I'm a tall guy, decent frame, a workout, good head on my shoulders. Actually, if we talk about mentally and like my internal characteristics, like spirituality and just the man I am on the inside, hella fucking S tier. Genuine, loyal, honest, good values, down and commit, one woman man, romantic. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The internal stuff is S tier. The external stuff, man, it's just like A tier, you know? Body's gonna fade one day. Fuck it, guys. It is what it is. But the cool thing, again, gentlemen, if you're F tier, fucking enjoy it. You can be F tier. It's all good. And then the last thing I put on this list is traveling. Not much to say here. If you don't already know, I traveled the world for four months, bought a one way ticket to Southeast Asia, put everything in a storage unit, had the most majestic spiritual awesome experience of my life just spending four months like not paying rent living abroad everything was in storage just drifting from city to city country to country staying as long as i wanted to stay meeting whoever eating cheap food experiencing different cultures i gotta give my travel life an s tier been traveling a little bit now that i'm back in the states little weekend trips here and there but after doing something that crazy it's hard to not just enjoy the fact that you have traveled and seen the world even though i'm in a lull season right now i'm kind of living the filler episodes of my life i'm not doing anything too crazy i'm just going through the, the motions enjoying the day eat sleep work out meditate repeat game chill work my nurse job and that's about it i'm okay with it because I have traveled and there will be more trips and adventures coming in the future. So we'll do S tier for that. So all in all, guys, not bad. And I think what I've learned from this tier list is that my life itself is really not bad on paper. It looks pretty damn good, which is actually refreshing because I was kind of uh, off my center the last couple of days um, and feeling a little bit off balance. But then looking at this list, it put a lot of things into perspective. And, you know, while there's things to work on, you know, diet, financial situation, romantic life, the vices, the smoking of the cigarettes, my shit skills and <laughs> video games, which really isn't even that big a deal. Uh, it just goes to show, like, even someone who's done the work like me, I've still got things to work on. And I think there's always going to be things to work on. And if you're making your own tier list for yourself, enjoy the fact that you have different tier lists for different things in your life. Not everything's going to be S tier. Like I can't be S tier in everything. Uh, and then there will always be a few things in the lower tiers, like B, C, D, F of your life. And I think when you put it on paper and you're honest with yourself, it can give you a really good perspective. And maybe your tier list looks a little different than this. Maybe you have a lot more Bs or Ds or Fs, and maybe they shouldn't be there. Maybe it's actually you're just being hard on yourself. Uh, but I think what's good about this exercise is that it really goes to show that there's always things to work on but there's always things going good for you and there might be some things that are going really bad for you but it doesn't matter that's what being human is and that's part of the human experience and the human condition things are always changing change is the only constant what's an f tier or d tier in your life will change from time to time there will be different variables life experiences letdowns failures um but even in the darkness, I think there's always going to be things that you're just naturally good at, things that you have mastered, good habits that you have put the work into mastering, like meditation and working out for me. It's something I don't have to think to do. I just do it. But, you know, the love life, romance, dating, diet, money, that shit I still got some work to do on. So what I'm saying, guys, is it's OK to not be perfect and embrace your imperfections. And I think the more you do that not from a place of like oh i'm imperfect i'm never going to work or try for anything but from this place of i'm beautifully imperfect and because i'm imperfect that gives me the right and the value to do whatever i want and work on the things that need work and the things that i think are valuable and your tier list might look completely different like these are just things that i feel like cultivate cultivate my essence right now but you might have completely different things on yours and yeah, I, I don't know. I think the point of this, guys, is just enjoy being human. Enjoy your experience on this planet and love life. Work on the things you can work on. Give yourself credit where credit is due. Don't beat yourself up for the bad things because all every human, we're all basically just a bucket of tier lists. Everybody's got their flaws and insecurities um, and everybody's got their things that they're innately good at. And we can't compare ourselves to anybody else out there. We're all different and that's OK. 
So just be beautifully you. And if you watch till the end of this video, I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. I'll see y'all on the next one. Yeah, I'm about to fade away. Cause every time I wake up, I feel like it's Monday. Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain. All of a sudden, I don't look at anything the same way. Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray. I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay? Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way.